In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create this crazy photo effect using Photoshop. So let's get started. Hey, what's up, guys? Drool here, back with another video. And as you can see, this is the final output, and this is the image that we are going to use. Now, this image is from Deventart.com. So if you want to use the same image, the download link is in video description. So feel free to use it. Now. First of all, to create this effect, we will need to create a custom brush. For that, go to file and select a new document, create a new document. And for this document, you have to make sure that it is a square. So I'm going to go with 1200 and also in my height, I will go with 1200. Resolution, I think 150 should be fine. And the higher the numbers, the better quality brush you will have. So hit OK. So as you can see, the square document is here. Now I'm going to select my brush from here. And then here in the brush, you have this really cool brushes. Uh, you can see this row from this 32 to 90. You can use any of them and it will work really nice. Not the 90 though, I think. So I will go with the 32 number and let's go here. Now, if I draw a line, it looks something like this, which is not very interesting, but we can make it interesting. And to do that, as you can see this little box here, click on that and in that box, you have to go to brush tip shape and increase the spacing a little bit not too much and not too low just a little bit as you can see here in the example now after that you have to go to shape dynamics and in there angle jitter should be 100 percent and then you can increase your size jitter that also by 100 percent and that's about it now if i go in and if i draw as you can see uh, it looks really like interesting and something that we can create an effect out of so I'm going to press Ctrl Z and again, so we have a really clean slate. Now I'm going to make my brush bigger. You can use your bracket keys, this big bracket keys to make the brush bigger and smaller. So I'm going to make it this big and let's make a shape. Okay, so this is way too big. We need to make it really small compared to that. Let's make it a little bit more smaller and then I'm going to start to paint. Okay, so that looks really nice. Now the shape you create here doesn't have to be accurately something like this, but make sure it is something wavy or something like that, okay? So this looks decent enough to me. Now to create a brush of this, you have to go to edit and there you have this option called define brush pressure. You see here? There, let's make it, um, I don't know, tutorial brush, I don't know. So hit OK. So this brush is saved as you can see. Now we don't need this document. So I'm just gonna go here and close it. No, I don't wanna save it. So this is the model here. And now I'm gonna double click on the background and unlock it. Now click on this little icon here and create a new blank layer. And in this new blank layer, select your paint bucket tool from here and make sure you have white color here and then fill it. And put this layer under your layer zero. So this is the model layer and this is the white layer that we created. Now on the model layer, you have to apply a layer mask and into that layer mask, you have to fill in black color. So the image is still there, but because we filled in black color in entire mask, it is hidden. Now it's time to paint the image. So to do that, I'm going to select the brush. Now we already have the brush we just created. Now this brush, uh, if I paint in here with white color, as you can see, it brings back the image. So this looks like, like it's not very good. You can see that. So to make it even more better, you can go here on this icon here, the one we used last time. And here I'm gonna go, and first of all, I'm gonna select my brush tip shape and make sure my spacing is around 30% or something like that. You can play around and create your own style, doesn't matter. And then I'm gonna go to my shape dynamics. And then I'm gonna adjust my minimum diameter a little bit, not too much. And as you can see, my angle jitter is already 100%. And in the roundness jitter, you can play around. So I'm going to make it 100%, uh, something like that. And in the minimum roundness, I'm also going to make it 100%. So completely random effect we are trying to get. And then also go to scattering. I'm going to make it uh, around like 100% or something like that. Not too much and not too little. So 100% seems decent. And in the count jitter, I'm going to keep it minimum, like 1-2%. These numbers are just, I was playing around and I got them. So you don't have to follow them blindly. And then to give it a little bit more variety, I went to the transfer. And in the transfer, I did a little bit of opacity jitter and a little bit of flow jitter. Not too much, not too little, just a touch. So that looks really nice. And make sure your smoothing is turned on. So that looks nice. And now, 
uh, this is a really big brush uh, so I'm gonna make it smaller I'm using my bracket keys as I said to make it smaller and bigger so let's make it smaller now uh, I think her face was exactly here so I'm gonna start painting on her face something like that so as you can see her face has started to revolve now whenever you are near to face I will recommend you paint with a relatively smaller brush and when the face is almost visible you turn your size really big like the brush as you can see and then you against okay that's way too big <laughs> okay uh, this seems fine okay we can make it even a bit more smaller and let's paint okay that's a really nice balance right there and then I'm gonna paint here so these are the really bigger strokes then uh, I'm gonna make it again slightly smaller and then start painting in here a little bit not too much and let's make it even a bit more smaller for this details here in the background so let's make it here a little bit and then uh, I'm gonna make it bigger and then paint again so what you have to make sure that the face is completely visible uh, because that's the point otherwise like if you can't see the person what's the point of making the effect let's close it here so I'm gonna paint here and then I'm gonna make it again slightly bigger for this here and let's say you think that okay I don't want this much effect here so all you have to do is just start painting with black color in your layer mask and you will start erasing that part and you think okay that's way too much and I wanna bring it back all you have to do is just paint with white color and I'm using my X key to flip between colors so let's paint it back here and the face is back so the beauty of this effect is that every time you create this effect it will be different than the last time and that's also the minus point because you cannot create the same effect twice even if you want to so now let's try with some you know color correction so I'm gonna go and create a new solid color in the solid uh, let's go and select a bluish color something darker than that uh, yeah this seems nice to me and let's make it even more bluish and hit ok now change this blending mode to exclusion so at first uh, it might be slightly stronger for your taste so you can decrease the opacity 57% uh, seems nicer and then I'm gonna create a lighting effect so to create that I'm gonna create a new blank layer and instead of this really crazy brush we created I'm gonna select this regular round brush and then I'm gonna make this brush bigger uh, something like this select an orange stone and the reason I created like chose the orange stone is because there is a lot of orange going on already her hair her skin if someone is wearing let's say blue dress you can try a blue color too so it will work nice you get the idea and then uh, I'm gonna make it screen and then let's put it over here and I'm gonna make it bigger I'm gonna press ctrl D hold my shift key and make this light bigger like that and then confirm it now I'm gonna drag this thing over here so that the slightly like the slight amount of part is on her hair and on her face and it doesn't overkill it okay we also want to see the model so that's that's looking actually pretty good I'm, I'm happy with it now here is one really important tip let's say you go in there and you select your brush see this is the brush and in the brush you go to setting you do all these crazy things that you want to do and you create a really beautiful preset now here's the problem if I do this I go back and if I select some other brush this all things will go away and also when you restart the Photoshop it will be all gone so to make sure you have this ready-made every time you use your brush uh, once let's say I also have dual brush and whatnot you have created this really nice preset then all you have to do is just go in here and you have this little icon here this little icon click on that and let's name it okay uh, my special brush preset see and then all you have to do is just hit okay and this is as you can see is already saved in here now let's experiment it so let's go and I selected this some brush brush and the settings are already gone so let's go and select this brush again and now see there's nothing here but all you have to do is just go back here and select my special brush preset and boom there it is so this way you can save the presets and save yourself a lot of time and as you can see all we had this little brush and we created this really beautiful effect out of this so that's it for this video and I really hope that you learned something and if you did hit that like button and if you have any kind of questions or suggestions 
feel free to ask them in the comment section below and if you want to check out more crazy effects like this you can click on any of these boxes and you can also subscribe to my channel so every time i upload a new video you will get the update plus it will take you to my channel where i have more than 75 free photoshop tutorials just waiting for you so till then goodbye take care and have some fun with photoshop